Now, we've been talking about changes that can happen to the ecosystem. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the fact that any of these changes, how much effect they have on the ecosystem depends on what we call the biodiversity of the ecosystem. Biodiversity is the amount of life or the types of life that exist in, within the ecosystem. And there are very, several ways that scientists go about measuring this. And advanced students need to know the names of those ways, even though if you don't necessarily have to know how to actually uh, measure that. The, you have the basically species richness, which is basically counting the number of different species that live in a place. You also have something that's called the Simpson Index and also the Shannon Weiner Index. But these are just different ways of, of measuring the same thing or the idea of the variety that exists in, within an ecosystem. Now, the reason why this is important is because when you study a community, you have to look at the types of life that exist. Look, community one, for example, on the left here, you see that it has uh, several different types of trees. But on community two, tree A is way more common than the other types, right? So which community is more biodiverse, right? You would say that they have the equal numbers of types of species, but perhaps they don't have an equal balance of those types. So that is another aspect when you're, when you're thinking about diversity. And that's why there's different ways of measuring diversity because you can just count how many types, in which case both of them will look equally diverse, or you can look at the balance that exists between each of the types to, to measure the diversity. And in future topics, when we do a biome ecology on the next video lecture series, we'll talk about what the importance of this is and also what factors mediate how much diversity exists in the ecosystem. Now, why is it important? Look at the top right here in this graph where you can see that the, the more diversity or the more types of species that exist in the ecosystem, the greater the amount of evapotranspiration ecosystem. Now, we don't know what that is yet, but we'll talk about it in the next video lecture series. But basically, that's a measurement of how much plants are performing transpiration, which indirectly, it's also a measurement of how much photosynthesis is happening in the ecosystem. Now, if you have the several types of species, according to what this graph is saying, you're going to have more productivity. That's interesting. That means that ecosystems which are richer will be more stable because they have more productivity, right? Now, look at food web A and then look at food web B. Which food web do you think will be affected the most by removing the butcher bird from this food web? Look at that. So let's see. If you delete this bird from the food web, which food web do you think will be mostly affected by that? Well, on this food web, this would cause this animal to die because that's, he eats this or the robin. But the robin, that's the only thing the robin eats. So this animal is going to go away, too. And then that means the native cat goes away. Now, the wasp only has the lizard raft to eat. So the lizard numbers are going to go down. And that means that the snake numbers will go up. But then the parasitic wasp will go down because there's not too much left. And that means this goes down, too, and this goes down, too. And this means every single animal in the food web is going to be affected, right? But since this food web is a little more complex, all right, the effects of deleting this might be reduced because you see, in this case, the robin gets to eat the spider too. So maybe that doesn't kill off the robins completely, which means it doesn't kill the native cat completely. Now, both food webs will be affected by what happened, but perhaps the food web on the left side will be affected less because it's more biodiverse. So extinctions, invasive species, all of these kinds of disturbances, uh, things that affect with the amount of nutrients, all of that will have less of an effect if there's more biodiversity within the food web. So a food web that's diverse can tolerate disturbances on the ecosystem better. And that's a term that means ascendancy. The ascendancy of the, uh, of the ecosystem is its tolerance level. How much can withstand changes to the, to, to the biotic and abiotic factors? And that has to do with the biodiversity of the ecosystem. So again, the bigger, the more diverse the ecosystem is, the better. And that, has, that obviously has to do with how much productivity it's going on. We talked about that before. But that's a very important concept in, in uh, ecology as well. By the way, this is just one reason why it's important to maintain biodiversity. There are other reasons which we'll talk about when we do environmental science later in the year. 